I was preaching in Ethiopia in a retreat in a remote village. Uh, somebody was translating because they, they speak another language called Aramaic. It's not Aramaic, it is another language in Ethiopia. So I am preaching very serious things about sexual purity that God never permits a man and a woman, a boy and a girl to have a physical sexual relationship. God only approves it between a husband and wife, anywhere else it's a sin. So I am preaching and then people are just laughing. I am speaking very serious thing and people are laughing after translation. So I doubt whether he's translating the same thing, <laughs> what I am preaching. So because certain words I know, for example, God and so on. So I understood maybe something different. So I asked this translator, are you translating what I am preaching? Uh, he said, no, I was just telling them why devil wanted to steal sexual purity. Is this vow of chastity and purity? Is it only meant for priests and nuns? He said, but my dear seminarians, let no one misguide you. You will have these sexual feelings even after death two more minutes. Devil has destroyed, has stolen our glory and grace by hiding the, the, the truth about sexual sanctity and its power. Small attachment, small sexual sin, it paralyzes them. It, they don't know the power. That's why they have just been sleeping he said I don't know what to do I was trapped I one of the weapons he uses us to sanctify us with sexual purity is one weapon is word of God he has no confidence in his body he is afraid he may fall into a sexual sin impurity so what does he do he punish his body Sexual impurity is a war against our soul's salvation. It's in constant war. Our flesh and our soul is in a war. Never automatically get out of you. It needs huge sacrifices. Intimacy with God, which is a higher level of spirituality. Praise you have tasted something higher, something greater. You will never look for something lower. Gospel of John chapter 8 verse 36 John 8 36 we read if the Son sets you free you will be free indeed repeat after me if the Son sets you free you will be free indeed if the Son sets you free you will be free indeed if the sun sets me free, I will be free indeed. Hallelujah. You are seated in front of Jesus who has the power to set you free. Amen. Who has the power to deliver you from bad habits, bondages, wrong relationships and different type of sinfulness. Jesus has the power then it also means there is nothing there is no one no idea no technology no science no medicine no advice can change a human it's only Jesus because everything that happens in our life Matthew 15 13 every plant that is not planted by my father will be uprooted there are many plants there are many weeds that is not planted by us not by god but by the evil so we read together he answered every plant my heavenly father has not planted let's read together louder everybody every plant that my fa father Remember the habit of alcoholism. Do you think Abba Father planted it? No. The evil one. And the Lord says, Every plant, that of anger, adultery, pride, jealousy, greed, lust, laziness, 
gluttony all these that the heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah even in the lives of apostles there were many unholy plants unholy roots that the lord removed it uprooted it that's why they could become true disciples of god saint paul 1 timothy chapter 1 from 13 saint paul himself says who was he i was saint paul says formerly a blasphemer a man of violence and a persecutor but god's mercy set me free and made me a new creation 1 timothy 1 13 1 timothy 1 13 can we read together even though i was formerly a blasphemer persecutor and a man of violence but i received mercy because i had acted ignorantly hallelujah so the plant that the heavenly father has not planted in paul was uprooted that is why he could become an apostle of god actually what blocks us to achieve god's favor what blocks us to produce great fruits those bad habits those bondages those wrong relationship augustine was also like this that is why in romans chapter 12 from 13 romans chapter 12 from 13 uh, uh, chapter 13 from 12 we read was saint paul uh, wrote and augustine says 13 from 12 the night is far gone can we read together louder the night is far gone the day is near let us then lay aside the works of darkness don't they see god is telling augustine who rejoiced in the arts of darkness who involved in adultery alcoholism wrong philosophy immoral arts the lord is telling uh, paul uh, augustine through the word of god through saint paul in romans let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light we continue now verse 13 verse 13 let us live honorably as in the day not in reveling and drunkenness not in debauchery and licentiousness not in quarreling and jealousy all these are the plants not planted by heavenly father jealousy quarreling licentiousness debauchery drunkenness we continue instead put on the lord jesus christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify every plant that the heavenly father has not planted is to be uprooted the most important thing are you ready to get out of these wrong arts in your life are you ready those who are ready raise your hands remember you are not lifting your hands in front of me i'm only a foot soldier of god before jesus he is exposed here he can see his eyes are 10,000 brighter than the sun. His speciality, Revelation 3, 20, Behold, I stand at the door knocking. If you open, I will come in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. David prayed, Psalm chapter 51 from 5. David prayed like this, I am a sinner from my mother's womb. I don't know why I do like this. I am adulterous. I am a murderer. I have these sinful inclinations in me. I do the very thing that I hate. And then David is begging, have mercy on me. And he received 
God's mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when you say to the Lord, Lord, I cannot make it by myself. I don't want to make any provision with my body. This is Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Every sin has a pressure attached with it. Can we read together? Instead, put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's a deliverance retreat. I just wanted to deal with one particular sin, which is the most committed sin. This is the sin of lust, sin of impurity, sin of sexual nature. Where people basically many, knowingly or unknowingly, willfully or unwillfully falling into this sin which paralyzes people spiritually. Praise the Lord. The sin of lust, the sin of impurity makes a person guilty makes a person sorrowful steals self-confidence makes a person keep distance from God that is why Romans chapter 8 chapter 5 verse 8 Romans chapter 5 verse 8 Romans chapter 8 sorry chapter 8 verse 7 and 8. Chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. For this reason, together, for this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Ah, once again, together, for this reason, mind that is set on the flesh you know there are people who always say I don't feel like praying I don't feel like going to church attending mass there are even children youth that distance themselves from church from God at a particular age they may be very active then all of a sudden they deal as if God is their enemy why those who set their mind on the flesh those who are into sexual sins can never be in friendship with God that is why many are in bondage and this is one of the biggest bondages sin of masturbation homosexuality lesbianism pornography uh, fornication adultery prostitution and many they are being grabbed by devil in this area we read for this reason the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. Anybody who has this hostility to God, they cannot come closer to God. They cannot pray earnestly. They feel a distance. They, they always feel the more, even if they pray a lot, there is something that is blocking them to get into that intimacy with God. The sin of sexual nature lustful desires lustful sins block a person to the holy God remember one single name that we call our God you know we have God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit even politicians say let us pray to God which God they don't say their name it can be a Muslim God it can be a Christian God it can be a Hindu God they just call we believe in God but which God just by saying somebody saying I believe in God it is not enough who is God who is our God remember our God our Christian God has one single name this name is called holy 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 so when we say holy 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 we mean God the Father who is holy God the Son who is holy God the Holy Spirit who is holy in no other religion in nowhere else God is called holy in many religions God is a revengeful person but in our religion God teaches even to love the enemies he alone is 
holy praise the lord so any nature any sin on the sexual nature is a sin against holy god that is why no one can stand in the presence of holiness when they have been attacked by the sin of impurity that is why verse 8 we read romans chapter 8 verse 8 chapter 8 was 8 and those who are in the flesh cannot please god once again those who are in the flesh cannot please god once again those who are in the flesh anyone who say that they are not able to please god that they are not able to come close to god that they are not able to worship god they are been attacked by the sins of the flesh the sin of lust in this deliverance retreat i just wanted to tell you preach to you about sexual purity and sanctity which will open a new door of holiness to you which will open a door of intimacy with god intimacy with god which is a higher level of spirituality praise the lord and once you achieve that intimacy with god these cravings of the flesh will go down it will not be attacked when you have tasted something higher something greater you will never look for something lower praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. and we have to know why devil is so angry why devil wanted to steal sexual purity why he is working against sanctity and holiness we have to know because of its power hallelujah hallelujah my dear sisters and brothers holiness is power purity is power sanctity is power that which makes us a true in- instrument of god is that gift of purity that is why the one area where devil is going to destroy or manipulate is the area of sexuality god never permits a sexual relationship between a man and a woman between a boy and a girl between a boyfriend and a girlfriend god approves it only between a husband and wife praise the lord Hallelujah. that is only in the sacrament of marriage god never permits a sexual relationship between two people if god only permits it between a man and a only between a husband and wife in the sacrament of marriage because sexuality is a great gift it is one of the purest gifts it's a gift of life it's a gift that extends god's life into generations that is why it's such a profound gift and it's a gift that devil manipulates the most praise the lord Hallelujah. praise the lord therefore even devil is angry with those who keep purity you know priests and nuns priests and religious are called to be and taking vows of chastity just because they have taken the vows of chastity that does not mean they are chaste or pure they are still it is like a treasure in the clay a treasure in the clay praise the lord because why god insisted them to have this purity and sanctity and you have to know is this vow of chastity and purity is it only meant for priests and nuns yes or no why and how a married person a married woman is not supposed to keep chastity they should have conjugal relationship between their spouse but then is it applicable to them definitely how a married man has to keep purity and chastity towards every other woman except the wife he has to live as an important towards every other woman a married man a married woman has to keep chastity towards every other man except the husband when that purity is been destroyed everything is falls apart praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah 
that is why the scripture says if the tree is holy the branches are also holy if the parents are holy the children are also holy because it's a seed of impurity that is why devil is so angry devil is so angry towards those who keep purity and chastity hallelujah my dear sisters and brothers the first thing we have to know keeping sexual purity and chastity is power keeping chastity and holiness is profound influence with god that is why even the angels and saints are jealous of those who take those who keep purity even the saints and angels are jealous of those who keep sexual purity did you hear what i said yes did you hear what i said yes is it true what i said can angels and saints be jealous second <laughs> uh, corinthians chapter 11 from 3 we read second corinthians chapter 11 verses from 3 we read i feel can we read together i feel a divine jealousy what did you second corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 ah yes from 2 from 2 second corinthians chapter 11 from 2 not just 3 from 2 onwards we read saint paul wrote i feel a divine jealousy for you for i promised you in marriage to one husband to present you as a chaste virgin i feel a divine jealousy who says a saint saint paul is telling he feels jealousy to someone who is a chaste virgin a chaste person to one single husband why because saint paul knows the power of being chaste and pure why i told you even angels are jealous why my dear sisters and brothers in the past in the past chastity was known to be an angelic virtue chastity was known to be an angelic virtue later the church fathers corrected these are not angelic virtues these are sacrificial virtues because they say it cannot be an angelic virtue because chastity is not a virtue for angels because angels have no sexuality they have no sexual feelings there is no sacrifice so it's not a virtue they are in 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 themselves they are chaste but as for human beings it's a virtue because we have sexual feelings and we sacrifice it therefore it becomes a virtue for us therefore it becomes power for us that is why even angels cannot have that power praise the lord they cannot suffer in their body but we can that is why such a powerful virtue angels know it is a purity and holiness it is sexual purity that makes a person to be a true saint before god hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. and we have to know naturally naturally we all of us are born out of lust born out of sexuality and every human have sexual feelings every human being has sexual feelings but what do we do this is galatians chapter 5 verse 24 galatians chapter 5 verse 24 saint paul says those who belong to christ jesus crucify their flesh with its passions and desires let us read together and those who belong to christ jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires listen carefully saint paul says those who belong to christ jesus do you belong to christ jesus yes. we all belong to christ jesus 
just because we are baptized and we belong to Christ Jesus, that does not mean we are chaste, we are holy. We still have passions and desires. What do we do? We crucify it. We sacrifice it. That is the way it becomes a virtue. Hallelujah. 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 So, purity and chastity will not naturally come to us. Naturally, we are sexual beings from head to bottom. One priest was preaching to the seminarian. And the priest said, he is almost 82 years old. He was telling the seminarians, My dear brothers, Maybe at this age of yours, they are just 23, 25 years old. At this age, you may be finding it very hard, maybe to keep sexual purity and sanctity. And you may think maybe you become 40 years, 50 years, everything will be normal. And this priest said, but my dear seminarians, let no one misguide you. You will have these sexual feelings even after death, two more minutes. <laughs> Don't think it will naturally go by age. No, you need to sacrifice it. You need to sacrifice. You have been constantly tempted and attacked by devil. Because it's a weapon devil uses to paralyze you spiritually. Those who have no sexual purity cannot even pray over others cannot even lead others to deliverance and new life because they are being constantly being attacked by the evil one what we have to do crucify the flesh saint paul wrote this is 1 corinthians first corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 first corinthians first corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 saint Paul himself says, what does he do? Together we read. But I punish my body and enslave it, so that after proclaiming to others, I myself should not be disqualified. I punish my body. He has no confidence in his body. He is afraid he may fall into a sexual sin, impurity. So what does he do? He punishes his body. Let no one misguide you. I was preaching in Ethiopia in a retreat in a remote village. Uh, somebody was translating because they, they speak another language called Aramaic. It's not Aramaic, it is another language in Ethiopia. So I am preaching very serious things about sexual purity. That God never permits a man and a woman, a boy and a girl to have a physical sexual relationship. God only approves it between a husband and wife. Anywhere else it's a sin. So I am preaching and then people are just laughing. I am speaking very serious thing and people are laughing after translation. So I doubt whether he's translating the same thing, <laughs> what I am preaching. So because certain words I know, for example, God and so on. So I understood maybe something different. So I asked this translator, are you translating what I am preaching? Uh, he said, no, I was just telling them, Father is saying some jokes, please laugh. I said, I am not saying any joke. I am saying very serious things. Then he said, Father, these things we don't speak here. It's a taboo for us. It's a taboo to speak all these things. You cannot just say about a sexual relationship, about all these. That is why I'm just uh, uh, telling according to this culture. So I, I asked him, but do they commit these sins? I, it is very common here, Father. It's very common. Then I said, that is why God wanted me to preach. Then he said, I told him, you don't worry. This foolish priest has come from another land. This is what he is preaching. You put accusation on me and you preach. It's not yours. But you can't just tell them to laugh. These are serious things. <laughs> devil, devil has destroyed our continent by hiding the truth, my dear sisters and brothers. Devil has destroyed, has stolen our glory and grace by hiding the, the, the truth about sexual sanctity and its power. This translator was telling me, it is a taboo. There is no taboo in committing adultery. It's a taboo only in preaching that. I said people are ignorant. 
John 8.32 You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why St. Paul says it will not naturally happen. I punish my body and bring it under control. This is again Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 11. Peter advises. It was now we read Paul's advice. Now Peter himself advises. First Peter chapter 2 verse 11. Beloved. Together. Beloved. I urge you. As aliens and exiles. To abstain from the desires of flesh. That wage war against the soul. Saint Peter is telling beloved. He is calling each and every one of us. Beloved. I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that wage war against the soul. Remember sexual impurity is a war against our soul's salvation. It's in constant war. Our flesh and our soul is in a war. That is why we need to be, we need to abstain from the desires of the flesh. It will not, let me repeat to you, naturally happen. This is the mistake devil has put. It will, it will never automatically get out of you. It needs huge sacrifices. It needs penances. It needs fasting. It needs renunciation of the desires of the flesh. Praise the Lord. That is why if we look into the Bible, we read the Lord clearly instructs how a married, a person should not eat with a married woman. Don't have a relationship with a married man or a married woman. Let us read. This is Sirach chapter 23 verses from 17 we read. This is Sirach chapter 23 verses from 17 we read that those who commit those who commit fornication they think nobody knows it but slowly everything falls apart from 17 to a fornicator all bread is sweet he will never weary until he dies the one who sins against his marriage bed say to himself who can see me Darkness surrounds me, the walls hide me, and no one sees me. Why should I worry? The Most High will not remember sins. His fear is confined to human eyes, and he does not realize that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. They look upon every aspect of human behavior and see into hidden corners. God can see everything, every sin that you commit. That is why God wants, people think, nobody knows. People think, who is a, it is with a mutual consent. But sin is a sin. That is why Romans chapter 6 verses from 12, 12 and 13, Saint Paul is again telling, Romans chapter 6, 12 and 13, therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies. To make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness. But present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we read together? Therefore, no longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Back in our place. You know the priests, those who are chaste, those who are pure, they have great power. Even those who lead single holy life there is profound power in their lives. That is why devil is so much angry, so much angry against those who keep purity and chastity, purity and holiness. Back in our place, elephant 
is a domestic animal. You know, in Africa, you see elephant only in the forest. In our place, if you see the festivals in India, the elephants are there for the festival. And some people control them, keeping one small stick, keeping on the under the ear, it will say, the master will tell the elephant, turn left, it will turn left. Turn right, it will turn left. Sit, it will sit. Stand, it will stand. Move, it will move. The elephants will do everything that this commander says. To pull the tree, to do different things, they use these elephants in India. In some houses, you can see an elephant in their courtyard. They keep an elephant, feeding them, letting them grow, and some sit on this elephant and travel. Even today, because they train these elephants, and they tie this elephant to a small tree, small plant, with a small rope, elephant cannot move. Once it moves, it sees something and it will sleep. It, why? It does not know its power. It does not know its power. It does not know if it stands, not only the tree, the whole mountain will come with it. It, it does not know. A spiritual father was telling, a chaste priest, a chaste nun, a chaste holy person does not know their power. It's like an elephant tied to a small friend, a small relationship, small attachment, small sexual sin. It paralyzes them. They don't know. That is why they are being tied. They don't know the power. That's why they are just been sleeping. I had a retreat in one of the parishes in Kenya. So because I was alone in the parish retreat, the parish priest, I asked him to help. He was celebrating the Mass and preaching the homily. I was so impressed. Very powerful homily. Very powerful voice. Very powerful word of God. Very, very good. So I told him, Father, I am struggling. We don't have enough priests. That I found you have a gift of the word of God. Preaching the word of God. Can you help in our retreats? Can you please come and help? Then he said, no, Father, I want to share with you something. So after the retreat, he helped me in the retreat for that time. And then he said, no, I cannot come and uh, be with you, preach there, because I have commitments. I told him, Father, when your commitments are finished, when you are free, because you have retreats every time, you come so that it will benefit you, it will benefit us, it will benefit Christians, it will save many souls, because you have this gift. Then he said, Father, there was a time when I used to preach, people used to cry, and there was a lot of conversion. But Father, I am not the same. I asked him, why? You are always the same. He said, no. Now, Father, unfortunately, I have a child with one of the Christians. I have a child with one of the Christians. A priest admitted his mistake. And he said, I don't know what to do. I was trapped. I cannot escape. Sisters and brothers, devil wanted to destroy priesthood. Devil wanted to destroy chastity. Devil wanted to destroy purity. That is why this priest is he's telling something is pulling me backward. Something is making me paralyzed. Devil knows power is in chastity. Power is in purity. This is not only in the life of priests, even in the married people. Look at a father who is infidel, unfaithful to the wife. That evil, that seed is spreading to the children. Generations are blocked. Remember the power of purity. It's only with that, my dear sisters and brothers, we become a true temple of God. God is holy. God dwells inside a holy person, inside a holy heart. And it will not, therefore, naturally happen because devil wanted to destroy it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And if we know that God created us, to be powerful instruments. How can we be holy? I always ask people, especially priests and nuns, why we keep chastity and purity? Why? You can't take chastity or keep purity because somebody else is pure. It is such a private, 
personal sacrifice you cannot be pure because somebody else is pure in every other area it's okay but in the area of sexual sanctity it is a personal commitment before god because in every person's life their sexual uh, disposition their sexual experiences are different some are wounded some are abused some are gone through lot of negative things in their life so they need huge sacrifice for some it is not so huge because they are not been abused but some have gone through lot of impure arts some have been totally been abused and seduced and they have gone through this negative thing in their life and it this itself is a big burden for them so it takes a personal sacrifice before god a personal commitment before god and that's the only way you can come out of this big burden in your life and remember sexual purity is not a burden it's a joy once you receive instead of this sexual attack you receive that intimacy with god many saints had this intimate experience with god hallelujah 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 therefore saint paul himself said this is first timothy first thessalonians chapter 5 was 23 first thessalonians chapter 5 was 23 may the god together may the god of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ saint paul says may the god of peace himself sanctify you there is no one no science no technology no medicine no advice that can sanctify us except god himself and one of the weapons he uses us to sanctify us with sexual purity is one weapon is word of god john chapter 15 verse 3 therefore we read by the word i have spoken to you you have been cleansed if you have a habit of reading and repeating the word of god can we read together you have already been cleansed by the word that i have spoken to you read together louder you have already been cleansed by the word so the word of god can cleanse you the first weapon to receive sexual purity and sanctity to repeat to recite to meditate the word of god hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. and the second thing is a, uh, psalm chapter 119 9 to 11 this is a question and a young man is asking it's in the word a, a young man is asking how can young people keep chastity how can young people keep purity we read psalm 109 19 verse 9 9 to 11 119 9 11 how can young people keep their way pure together how can young people keep their way pure by guarding it by guarding it according to your word verse 10 with my whole heart i seek you do not let me stray from your commandments see how can you keep pure by seeking god with your whole heart and by not straying from the commandments of god then verse 11 i treasure your word in my heart so that i may not sin again ah, i treasure your word in my heart so that i may not sin against you praise the lord hallelujah so if you don't have a habit of reading repeating the word of god you cannot cleanse yourself remember god himself has to sanctify you you cannot solve the problem of your own sin god has to solve it with our own power we can only commit sin we need grace to overcome sin that is why we need to repeatedly ask the intervention of god first step 
by repeating reciting by treasuring the word of god this is john chapter 17 verse 17 sanctify them in truth jesus himself is praying for the disciples for their sanctification sanctify them in the truth your word is truth your word is truth so through the word of god the disciples can be all the followers of jesus can be sanctified so the first weapon to receive sexual purity and sanctity deliverance from sexual bad habits is word of god praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah and the second is the blood of jesus christ the blood of jesus christ this is hebrews chapter 9 from 13 Hebrews chapter 9 was 13 then 14 Hebrews chapter 9 13 and 14 for if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified in the past whenever people have a problem they used to offer animal sacrifice pouring out their blood and we read now verse 14 now the scripture says how much more will the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to god purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living god how much more blood of christ purify our conscience from dead works before you sleep pray this prayer and you sleep the prayer was take the crucifix in your hand kiss the forehead of jesus and say lord jesus as i kiss your forehead the blood that came out from your forehead may pour out upon my own forehead and purify my head from every sin impurity kiss the right hand wound of jesus and say my lord jesus as, as i kiss your right hand wound purify my right hand from every sin and impurity kissing the left hand wound of jesus say jesus as i kiss your left hand wound purify and sanctify my left hand from every sin and impurity kiss the wound at the side of jesus and say lord the blood that came out from your heart pour out upon my head and purify my heart from every sin kiss the wound in the feet of jesus and say lord cleanse and purify my feet from every sin and protect me praying this prayer of kissing the five wounds of jesus you go and sleep don't sleep without it